All right. It's the Cares None Be Dope podcast. I am your host, Chris Cares None, and then with my co-host, Derek Fisher. What's up, man? What's up, baby? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Uh, man, it's been a while, man. When's the last time you've been on? Uh, I was thinking about it. Probably a little over a month. A month and some change, yeah. You know, what it, what it was is because we, we still seen each other, just not for a yeah. pod. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because we do the wing review. How are them wing reviews coming? Hey, they looking schmelly, baby. They looking schmelly. I'm so, like pr- I'm so proud of the wing review, man. Yeah. I'm surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm so proud of the fact that we've kept on it. Mm-hmm. And, we, and then what we've done, how I many? I going to ask, how many are we? I, like I want to say we have at least, at about least, 20. no, I'm talking about like out. Out? 14. 14, yeah. But we, well, we have shit in the bank, um, for those who don't know. So they come out every Saturday, but we do them like, in, in, what would you say, in four at a time? Yeah. Because it's hard to do that every single Saturday. You know, Steve's got his kid and everything. But I'm, I'm enjoying them. They're fun. Would you, let me ask you this. Would you... And maybe we talked about this last time. Would you have expected the wings to be so different? No, not at all. I didn't expect that at all. And and what we're doing is just the the same, just traditional, typically traditional buffalo of every place that you can think of. And you wouldn't even think about as far as um, density and sauce, vinegar, amount of vinegar people use versus skin versus amount people are cooking. And it's all type of stuff that you wouldn't even think about. And on top of that, the sauces. Right, the ranch versus the blue cheese as mm. well. So you would not think that um, a regular a regular buffalo uh, <laughs> chicken would, would would be so different now. To have and then like I'm just I don't think we've had any that have been like the same. Nope, they've all been. Nope, they've been similar, but not the same. Some of them have been similar. Yeah, which but ones? They've all been distinct. How many would you say have been similar? Not that many. Probably like one or two. Yeah, like not that yeah. out of the the <laughs> fourteen. No, we've probably done about seventeen, eighteen, twenty, or whatever. Yeah. And I'm shocked how different they are. And now, here's the cool thing about doing this ring review. We're legit connoisseurs. Mm-hmm. We actually oh. know. So, like, you know, you'll be at a party one day and somebody will be like, oh, man, you know, I, I, this place got the best wings. You'll be like, well, where is it? I've probably been there, <laughs> number one. But then number two is like, okay. Then, then this, you'll probably want to check it out. Because every time somebody tells me that, I'm always like, oh, that might be another place to go check out. For sure. Uh, but I feel confident in telling someone where to get good wings mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah and i'm like super we doing our thing a little bit sometimes and we ain't gonna stop and you know it's, it's getting a little bit of love on youtube finally you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying and we starting that from scratch and like each each uh episode is getting like an average of 50 60 views that's good which is really good that's good no that's really good you know what i'm saying and we just started that shit takes People time love to be informed which is which is this is why it's going to be a successful thing and people are like super like antis- they're anticipating it, like oh man, like when's the next one coming out? That's why we can't really miss it if we want to keep it on track, you mm-hmm. know. Which is a good point. Consistency. Like I, I feel like people don't understand how important that shit is, and I didn't understand it for like most of my life. To stay consistent, mm-hmm. don't matter where what you're doing, you just gotta keep doing it. What has that done for you? What has consistency done for you? About it. I mean, my life is picking up because I've been consistent on it, you know, it, it, especially when I've had moments where I've been like, why am I being consistent? You know what I'm saying? Like, this is dumb. Don't do this. You know, I, mean, I think we all have those moments at times. But um, even to go back with like the weight loss, like it, it ain't going to happen overnight. That shit took time. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, we and me too, it feels like we kind of want instant results. Yeah. But the instant results just don't come, man. To piggyback off of this a little bit, <clears throat> excuse me, I've been kind of going through this thing with um, planning and personal planning and how it's, it seems like it's crazy how it's easy for people to not want to follow through with their own plans. You know what I mean? It's like, why, why would you want to disappoint yourself? That's kind of how my mentality is. It's like, if I say I'm going to do something, I want to do it no matter what it is. You know, it... it goal based or just whether coming to your house or anything you know what i'm saying so i've been thinking about this thing uh trying to get more in depth with it it's like why do we find it easy to disappoint ourselves like just as far as like making a plan and not doing it Mm. i want to go see somebody real quick but not doing it or i want to you know or just just any small thing like that man personally i don't know i don't know if i know the answer and it's probably different a little bit different for all of us but i would say um so you know mike to piggyback off that Mike stopped. He made a commitment to stop drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Mike's on board. 
You know, and it's actually kind of dope because a lot of very close people in my life have committed to stop doing the things that have been fucking with them the most, you know? Yeah. A good six people, like, in my immediate close homies and, and friends and girls, like, they're all like, I'm going to stop doing something that's been bothering them. Right. Uh, I, I want to take a little credit, you know, they, I'll take, like, at least 5% credit for that. But um, get your sign, get your sign. But what I was talking about Mike this weekend, when he had his realization, is, like, I think you have to start to l- love yourself, like to learn to love yourself. For instance, so if we keep doing shit that we know is bad for us, right? Like, for instance, drinking, for like people who can't control it, like myself. Why would you keep doing something and then and, and when you know it, it's going to hurt you in whatever degree? And I've definitely been learning that lesson deep. And then it comes down to value. And the reason why we get fucked up, at least is my opinion, I'm not, I didn't go to school with no shit, but from what I've gathered... We like to get out of mind, a lot of us, because we don't like being as is. So the reason why we, after work, you so pissed off and stressed out, you want to get something to drink because you want to get away from the shit, right? right? Um, and to go back to me and the reason I was drinking before, and we talked about this, but I want to talk about it again, is because I, I wasn't confident who I was as is. And I thought, and it was very, very obviously bullshit, but I thought that that booze helped me be a, a person that I was more okay being. Right. And then, w- which which shows that you don't love yourself enough. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, that, that, mm-hmm, ultimately. Mm-hmm. So then when I told myself, you know what? Let me let me really love. It's one thing to say it, but let me really do the things that if you loved yourself, you would do. Like, if you love somebody and you know they have a drug problem, are you, like, let's use you. And let's say I have a drug problem. Would you personally keep giving me drugs? No. You would try to keep them away from me, right? Right. So why wouldn't you do that for yourself? Right. I know. I know. So it I'm seems, like, same simple, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. It's not simple. It's and it's almost like this world. Tell me your thoughts on this. It's like it's built for us not to love ourselves. Oh, absolutely. I can. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's selfish. It doesn't work if you're. It doesn't work if you're being selfish because you're not doing anything for me. Mm. Ultimately, you know, grand scheme of things. I need you to, it, you know, it, it, oh, man, that can be broken down so many ways, but yeah. So I was talking to someone last night, and this is a good point. I used to be more about doing things for other people, right? I used to, like, especially when it comes to girls or anybody, I would go out of my way to do things even before myself all the time, which I would think, if you look at just the logistics of, of that statement, as you're doing something nice for people. Right. And, and, in, and in essence, you were. You know what I'm saying? I want to yeah, do something sure, nice. Sure. Maybe for the wrong reasons. Maybe because you didn't think you were good enough. Whatever. Right. But then when I came across this idea and mindset of, let me fix my own shit, because how can you make anyone else happy if you ain't happy, right. ultimately? And then I started working on me. I actually helped more people. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which you is have, a weird paradox. It's a, it's a different way of helping people, though. I think you, 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 I think we ultimately do help each other, and that ultimately helps ourselves in the long run. Whether it be through helping ourselves originally or through helping others originally, I think you're trying. You were going through it, trying to help others originally. Let's well, yeah, say, but if, but the problem like was, I, I think for me, I'm gonna speak for myself. When I was helping people before, it it was it wasn't for genuine, just because I really wanted to help them. It was like a, I didn't feel good enough and I wanted them to like me as opposed to genuinely trying to help them. Understood. You see what I'm saying? Whereas now, I don't fake give do shit for people. If I do it for you, I really want to. Right. And it's not because I want you to like me back. Right. Whereas before, I was especially when it came to women, I, I'm going to try to nice you to death. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to show you the world so you can know that I'm the one for you, which is a selfish act at the end of the day. Whereas now, I don't do none of that. But I, I tried to be the best me and almost lead by example. Yeah. And that actually helps people right. in a more it's a substance. Way. It's a different way in which you... I would say it's, like it's even more substance. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's, a, it's like almost less hands-on, but it's more like damn near spiritual way <laughs> of, of, of being connected with a person. Because you're in somebody's like, damn, you're in somebody's perspective. Mm. And that's, that's such a different You know a what I mean? Feeling. That's a different way of, of leading or influencing, or whatever have you, whatever word you want to use, you know, leading someone's perspective, and especially by example. Like, to me, that's, yeah, that's one of the I'm best saying. ways to yeah. lead. To me, it's that's easy. What I'm perspective, you can lead a perspective. That's a that's a different way of looking at it, rather than trying to trade a gift or something. And the way I look at it is, it's 
because at the end of the day, we're all the same, right? Absolutely. So if if one person can do something, then we all can. That's at least my perspective. Now, Steve has a little bit of his whole thing is now some people just have a certain thing. And, and maybe to some degree that's true, but I believe you can change shit. I believe, you know, you can be given a, a spark in a different direction. I, I believe people can change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, he, and I don't think he was saying people can't change, but I think he was saying, you know, sometimes you're just born with some shit. Like Mike thinks I'm just born. I'm like, no, nah, man, I just worked at it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I just worked at trying to, and like, especially like the drinking. You know what I'm saying? That's really hard for a lot of people. It was really hard for it was really hard for me. And uh, I think the only reason why I was a- why I'm able to do it so far for seven months, which is cr- you remember how much I drank? Yeah. I drank, drank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is because I've been trying to discipline myself for so many other things before that moment. So I've already tried stopping things. Like for instance, like a, being a vegetarian for six six months. I did that. Yeah, me too. Just to just to see, you know, just to I didn't need to do that, and it wasn't even something that I desired to do. I was like, let me just give it a shot, you know. Same thing. And um, and I and I feel like we all I feel like we These all can do that. No yeah. excuse. I don't know. I don't say no excuses because I don't. Know, I don't want to say no excuses, but I do want to say like, man, there's no excuse why you can't even attempt to try it. And I guess that to try to bring it back to my uh, thing I had about uh, planning. You know, uh, I guess maybe there's a fear of failure as far as planning goes on that part. So maybe there's a fear of, or to what you were saying, lack of self love or self confidence or, you know. Yeah, that failure is a, that failure is a motherfucker. It's just man. one of my things, one of my biggest things is I love, I'm a person that loves maps. And I love, I love, I love articulating myself through mapping and planning and things like that. So it's like I love to even get on a metro and go from point A to point B. You know, or to get on a bus and go to a train to get mm-hmm. to there, to go to there. So I like the planning aspect of things and to get from one place to another or to do one thing that you say you're going to do and get there at a certain time. So it's like, you say you've always been that way? I, I think I've always been that way, but it's like the art of planning something is like it's something that you have control of. Mm. So this is something that you have control of in your life. And I, I try to apply that mapping type of aspect to many things in my life. It's like if you want to do something, just do it. Which is why I've been able to do the things that I've been able to do. Because it's, it's like if you just map it, <laughs> then just go through with that, and then you you will be satisfied at the end of that. Right. So, like you said, it ultimately comes down to like goals. Yeah. It's essentially, just the, it's just the way in which you try to look at it. So. Yeah, everybody. So I've been doing a lot of a lot of. I've been on like a real self development grind lately. I've been like, you know, I go on my spurts, but right now I'm on like a hard, like a vicious That's one. That's what's up. And. They all say, man, goals, write them week, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, five-yearly, lifely. And it makes sense why a goal makes sense. It's like a GPS. Mm-hmm. A GPS is dope, but it, don't, it only works if you put in a destination. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I, I heard something on, the radio, on, on, the, on YouTube. The guy was like, the goal's kind of like being on a ship. Uh, and the captain and, and and having a destination, you, it, if you don't put a destination and you have nobody running the ship, you'll be lucky to even get out of the port. And you definitely ain't about to get to anywhere specific because you didn't put a destination. You know what I'm saying? You, you didn't aim for nowhere. So to, to aim, and then to aim high. Oh yeah, why not? It, I think, and a lot of people scared to aim high, man. It's like. Whoa! Which gets back to why you were what you were saying. Like they, it seems like they were tricked into. <laughs> yeah, like like almost like they're not worried to do it, and then and then they are worried about the bullshit. They all worried about the what people are going to say, and you know. And but I'm why like, do we glorify the people who do it though? That's a good point. It's because they know it's that. tough, right? Because they, they, we glorify the people who push past it, but we are scared to push. push past and it's like we all can do that. <laughs> it's like we all can fucking do that. Like every single person listening, everybody outside, that dude walking down the street, we all can do something. Now don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not saying like Hollywood fame type of shit. I'm talking about whatever your goal anything is. Anything you want to do, record something on the street. Yeah, whatever your goal is. <laughs> I remember when we first started doing the wing reviews, I was a little bit weird about people seeing. And then, it, but the point is, like, even if they do see, who the fuck cares? Right. Like what? Like whatever that feeling is that we feel, like that that weirdness, like what? That thing isn't a tangible, like physical object. That's just it's your mind. Yeah. Which means it can be altered. Yeah. You know. And then if you can do that altering without a substance, that's when you're really killing it. Right. I remember being going to bars and shit, you know, with the fellas, and 
And then we all sitting, you know, and I bet you 95% of men do this. We're sitting there at the bar and we're sober, getting drunk. And we're looking at the girls and we want to go talk to them, but then we don't, you know. And then, but we have like that approach anxiety, you know. And then once we start getting fucked up or the drugs hitting or the pill hits and all that shit hitting or we, you know, everything's starting to hit. Then you have the balls to go talk to the girl. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking to myself, like, man, I... Why do we have to be fucked up to do that? Inebriation. You know, like, why do we? And, and it stems from, it, it, tell me if you agree, because you don't feel that you're dope enough as you are to go talk to that girl. Ultimately, mm-hmm. why would you be scared to talk to anyone? Is it because you're, you're afraid? Why are we scared to talk to each other in general? Yeah, like, it, so yeah, like just a, like a stranger or something. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. I, I've never been really scared to talk to, like, Strangers, but, but specifically, it's kind of typically weird to for two people who don't know each other to just start talking. You know, and what? But why? Why are we so? Mm. Why is it so? Like, it just, it, I was even thinking back to um, what you were saying when we were doing the ring, wing review, and that um, as a creative person, why or as a person in general, why do we think that it's weird to see a group of people doing something creative on the street? Which is what we know that people do. We like, look at creativity all day long. So you're saying, like, why is that the fir- even if you can overcome it, why is that still the first thought? Why is that the first thought for all of us? When we're behind the camera doing it, when we're acting it, or when we're just or whatever, just, whatever. We're just and in your when you see somebody crazy. walking. Why is that? A- I bet you it has something to do with like a defense mechanism. Okay, I bet. I, can, I mean, I don't I know can, the answer. I'm, I'm just yeah, guessing. Yeah, yeah. No, that can. That can like, be and going back to caveman days, and you know, we we couldn't speak a language. You had to be worried about, you know, this motherfucker coming to get me. Is this is this guy? Uh, is this an enemy or is this a, you know a foe or whatever? I don't. That's what I would think. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, it's just interesting. Just a but I know, but when you when you start to f- beat those, when you start to f- like f- beat those demons of that feeling. Holy shit! Life is different. Yeah, for sure. It's way different. For sure, for sure. For sure. When, when when you when you start to truly feel com- like comfortable in your own skin, and I'm not even there fully yet, but I'm like, this is the closest I've ever been to you know ultimately not giving a fuck. Yeah. And um, it's 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 mind blowing because the more I the more I feel comfortable in my own skin, the more my life leaps in the trajectory Absolutely. I agree. but it's like i gotta keep learning that shit you know mm-hmm. and, and and i gotta keep on and again i said this on that torture chicks podcast you gotta get i told her to get you on too okay the, it's like the more work i put on my mind the better my fucking mind is yeah <laughs> which makes sense because it's growing it's growing you're just building different things on your on your shit on your mind platform shit your mind is the platform you're just exercising your muscle growing giving yourself dif- yourself different opportunities yeah Cause it's like it's it's all perspective, man. Think about it. Here's what makes us dope. Here's another. Nobody <laughs> sees the world through your eyes and I your know, lens. They never will. And also your experiences. So think about that. So the story you see, like when you're looking out your eyes and you see life every day, you wake up and go to sleep. That's like your personal fucking movie. Mm-hmm. 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 Because it'll never be seen. You're the director of it. So it's like everything you do, you and you're literally in control. Of everything that goes on in this movie. Yeah. Now, there's going to be things that you are not in control of. But I think, feel like from what I'm learning, those aren't the things to be worried about because it is what it is. But the things that you can control, control them, bitches. Right. But that's the part of partnership that you have to understand working with others. That's that's when it comes time to understand how much do you invest in yourself versus other people. And what do you invest in yourself versus allow other people. Right. You know. Especially because time is so... That's another one too, man. Let's talk about like your time, time you know, yes, like holy it's, fuck. It's of the essence, but I had to realize like some sometime it is of the essence, but sometimes it is gonna be wasted sometimes and you have to realize that that is just a part of life. Yeah, it's gonna happen sometimes. You know what I mean? You're gonna have your moments where it's gonna be some lag times and shit like that and but I, I do feel like the more you have less of that, the, the more productive oh, you are. You know what absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely. But that's what I mean. Accepting that part of it is okay. Just accepting the down parts of the grind. Yeah. Because that's why know, they call it a grind, time. right? Yeah. Just know that time, we always stress, like, use your time wisely, use your time wisely. But we don't ever talk about the fact that there is downtime and there is time when you, you aren't using it wisely sometimes. But that's part of using your time wisely is some of that not use. You know what I mean? I'm trying to. I'm trying to uh, see me. 
I get what you're saying, and yeah, yeah, you, like yeah. you definitely got to put some time away. Yourself up about it. Yeah, I guess not beat yourself up, but unless you unless you prime. know, well, hold on, let, 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 let's 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 beat this one out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I, there's definitely been moments where I've come to that realization, but I'm having that realization too often in my personal world. Like like, all right, don't beat yourself up because it, but it's like, all right, you can't just say that and then you're not getting shit accomplished. I think it's okay if you are okay with where you're at, then that's cool. But if you're sitting there like, man, I wish this or I wish that, Absolutely. then you should probably have less of those moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're like, fuck, I, you know, I wish I had more money. I wish I had this. I wish yeah. I would create something. Then we should probably embrace having those down moments less. Right. But if you're like, no, you know, I'm kind of killing it. Da, 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 and you have, then I feel like that's okay. Yeah, I think it's about Balance. developing your pace, your pace, finding your pace. I think that's what's important. Because a lot of times it's shoved in just time, 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 time. But it, I think it's more about your pace because your perspective, your pace, your creative pace, you know, that all that stuff is relevant to time. Now, I'll tell you this, though. What what if the reason why we jag on some stuff that we know we, quote, unquote, supposed to be doing ah, that's interesting. is because we don't really love it. Like, for instance, do you know what I'm never going to jag? What I've never jagged? 2K. Okay. okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I find time. You know what else I haven't jagged? I do not miss going to seeing Steve on Sundays. Right. In 20 years, I do not miss that ever. Mm -hmm. So my point, and, and what's the reason? Because it means that much to me. Now, editing this video, which obviously, and I, I, I think I like the end goal, yeah. but I don't necessarily love the editing that much. Okay. But it's like, how come I don't have that same sense of urgency? Uh -huh. and, and I get the reason would be because I obviously don't, prioritize as much as I prioritize going to Steve's or the, playing 2K. The only, the only thing I would agree with that usually, but I just thought of something. The only thing that I think is different is hanging with Steve and playing 2K are actions of leisure, whereas editing a video is something that's is, it's focused. It's a tedious process. It's something that you enjoy, but it's not something that's leisurely. Something that's leisurely is always going to seem more pleasurable innately before anything else. So, so relaxing, doing this shit. I mean, 2K, you're focusing and whatnot, but you're, it's mostly a, a zen moment for you. Yeah, it's definitely, Same thing yeah. as re relaxing with Steve, so. Now, well, but if you told me I had to go play Minecraft, I don't think it would be as leisurely because I don't enjoy that as much. So you wouldn't go to that first. Right, right. <laughs> so you you're, saying the, go edit your video you're saying the act of the video game itself or what it is that I'm doing specifically. I think the act of playing 2K specifically is an for act me, of just okay. zen and leisure. I don't for think me. Minecraft would do that for you. So you would go edit your video in that case. Right. In that case, yeah, I would definitely. Yeah. Uh, if, it was, if the option was Minecraft or edit a video, I'm editing a video <laughs> right, right. by a mile. Right. But that's just interesting because if you told me edit this video or, or go see Steve on Sunday, I'm, I'm you know right. what I'm saying? I know. But here's the true. thing. But. Me editing that video ultimately leads to my biggest, my own personal biggest I know, dream. I know, I know, I so know. So it's like, oh. I think it's just that, le I want to give leisure, I feel like leisure has a little more clout than we try to give it credit for. We try to be. And you got to enjoy this shit a little bit. Yeah, we gotta yeah. enjoy this fucking life shit yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it like can't it. always be the goddamn right there. Yeah, that's what I mean about time and shit. Like it can't be just grind, grind, time, time. Just use time for grind only. Like I get it. Some niggas say that though. I, hey, I, I <laughs> trust me. I grew up trying to listen to like a Puff Daddy type of mentality, where it's like don't sleep type of shit. Just get everything done every hour of the day. But bro, you got to let's pivot. Time. Let's pivot to Nate Robinson getting his ass. Yes, work. let's do that. <laughs> Can you? What do you? What do you think about the whole Nate Robinson situation? I love Nate Robinson. <laughs> I love him. He's, he's he's a legend. So for the people who don't know, I, I'm, I'm sure the whole world knows now. He fought <laughs> Logan Paul. Yeah, is his, or is it Jake? There's brothers, right? Jake Paul, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. I know it, there's two brothers. I believe it's Jake Paul. Well, Jake Paul's the one about to fight the Mayweather. Right. That's the one he's gonna fight. Then, no, right? that's his brother. Let's get it right then, because I thought he was fighting the one who fought. I think it's Logan Nate. Paul. Hold on, my damn phone. Let's just make sure. Logan Paul versus Nate Robinson. These are the top results. No, Jake Paul. So that's Jake. And then who's Logan Paul? Who is Logan Paul? So Floyd's fighting. Maybe it is both. According to Wikipedia, Logan Alexander Paul is an American YouTuber, internet personality, actor, and boxer. So they're both. Bo wait, wait. So who fought who? Wait, so just type in Floyd Mayweather, and it's gonna something's gonna come up with who he's about to box. Well, okay. Floyd Mayweather. 
Here's what I found. It's been a while for uh, Logan else? Paul. So he's going to fight his brother. Right. Okay. And Jake Paul was the one. Who <laughs> fought Nate Robinson. Okay. So I, I forgot, you know, I, I, who the fuck is these brothers? Like, I, I, do you watch them? No, nah, that was my. No, I, nah, I don't. But I know they're like big YouTubers, they're huge yeah, yeah, YouTubers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got a phone One phone. of them just called McGregor's wife a four. Like, a what? A four, like out of 10. Oh, I was like, what? that's I fucked like, up. That something new? <laughs> How you like? Listen, I'm all about talking shit, right? You know, and they got to get the the fight. You know, he's trying to get, imagine if Mayweather gets in the not Mayweather if McGregor gets in the in the ring with him, that's gonna make a fuck ton of money, right? Mm. But to call somebody's wife a four is savage. That's a big move. <laughs> like you got some balls, and, and it's one thing like in boxing, like McGregor probably beat your ass like in real life. It's yeah, one yeah, thing if y'all in the ring fighting boxing, and it's got to be boxing rules. But if you're in the backyard, McGregor's probably going to beat your ass. Uh-huh. He's a UFC, like, champion Monster. fighter. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you've just been boxing a little bit. And uh, albeit, I think he's solid. Yeah. And like I said, in boxing, you might have a shot because McGregor's not really a boxer. He's a fighter, and I think he got into it boxing. But, like, I don't know, man. I, I feel like, shouldn't you go a little harder? If, I was, if somebody called your wife a four, wouldn't you have to, like... <laughs> Fight, you have to like do something with that. Like, I gotta bop you up a little bit better. Yeah, come on, I gotta, man. I gotta, I gotta beat I gotta, your ass. Gotta, How are you gonna just talk about my wife like that? <laughs> I feel like wives, like wives and shit is off, or like when Tupac was talking about Biggie, uh uh-huh. that was fucked up. <laughs> That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat. I was like, whoa, Tupac was, <laughs> was why? That, that boy was. I felt like Biggie never w- went that hard as hard as Tupac went at him. Oh, no, never, never, never. Tupac just he he just he cares none. He really cares none at one point in his life. <laughs> like when he got the thug life shit, he he really cares. Well, none. and you know what's funny? Because before the thug life shit, he was kind of sweet. He cared some. He cared some. There was one some. video that came out, and he was a little sweet. I thought. Yeah, he was. Little, I, Tupac's your boy. Hey, I'm Tupac. I know Jada Pinkett. Right? Got, got <laughs> like you, buddies. You a wild boy. <laughs> uh, now, do you think that that Nate Robinson fight was fair? As far was, as just from the boxing, I think it was funny. Did you watch it? I didn't. I didn't watch it. No, just highlights. Yeah, I just. I, didn't, I just I saw watched, the nigga no, laid I out most of it. But shout out to my fucking legend, Snoop Dogg. I heard he for, crushed it. Oh my god, he just he is he is the most like pivoted person I know. He is <laughs> always in the right spot to just be an American legend for some reason. And he, he, for years he, now he, too. He killed it for all the commentating. So shout out to him first of all. But I get it. Athletes always try to think that they can do other things, and Nate. I used to watch The State of Nate, which was his um, series that he used to have on YouTube, which was wonderful. It was like just a documentary series following him. So I got to see a lot of his personality and whatnot. And this he seems cool like people? Super cool people. Nate is down to earth, like one of the homies, somebody cool to be on the podcast type of shit. Um, but um, this is something Nate would do. Like he was just trying out for the Seahawks and all this other stuff. Like he's just, he's fun. He's, right. Nate, and I know he has the heart of a champion. Yeah, like he's, a, he, you know, Nate. Nate How Nate, tall is he, 5'6"? Five, 5'10", five, 5'9". Five, Something like that. Five eight. I want to say five nine. How tall is Nate Robinson? Nate Robinson is five feet nine inches. Hey, turn up, turn up. <laughs> I know my best ball. Group. All right, so Jake Paul is six one, and Logan Paul is six two. Anyway, that was funny though, because because it 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 just seems like something Nate would do. But you put yourself in that situation for a reason. Like you know, it's a possibility if you get knocked out. And he was the one that called him out. Of course, and that's what's funny. I know, the, I know the whole energy behind it. You think you got this white boy? He ain't talking about shit. He an internet sensation. I'm a, I'm an uh, athlete my whole life. I got hands. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, wait. And he was swigging like a bat out of hell. I was like, they know. They said that Nate Robinson put black people back 400 years. He did. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Cause it's like a thing well, that like. Thank you, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were saying that I like this shit over. White folks, like, and it, it should be fair because a human being is a human being. But like, I guess white folks go. They're scared of blacks, right? You know, that's they're just scared of the, the reverse the, history of that. All that bullshit, like, right? Right. Went through that podcast again. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just really funny that that he like kind of proved that like, all right, you know that. I, I love it. No uh, <laughs> but we, so we about feel about Mayweather. This shouldn't even be a contest. Yeah, I I didn't understand. I don't I don't understand it right now. So like why it's going down? Yeah, I would like to hear your part on that. Um, I would say I get it. I think, but I want. Well, there's gonna be a fuck ton of money involved, right? With, but I was like, how much money is actually gonna be involved in that? Because I didn't know if the internet sensation was Mayweather type money. 
I don't know if it'll be a hundred million, but I bet you can like, get 30, 40 off of it for okay. sure. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, because they just so saw how good. Of, I know what, money, how, what amount of money he usually goes for, so I didn't know if an internet sensation was worth that much for Mayweather. Well, I, I, I think that this would be a big deal. One because I think it's Mayweather, breaking. right? And you got a YouTuber. Yeah. But I think the way to make it work because if you're doing just boxing, this guy has zero chance. Right. May- May- Mayweather has gone up against the best. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and it, wait, wait, and never lost. He's never lost a fight. The, uh, yeah, uh, this Philly shell, whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> but uh, so he's never lost. And so I think what they should do, and I heard this on the Flagrant 2 podcast, it makes sense. They said Mayweather should come out and say, dude won't even get a lick off me, won't touch me. Because that's his whole thing, right? He's a defensive fighter and you can't hit him. Uh-huh. And that would be a way where the Logan Paul dude or Jake Paul, whatever the fuck his name, I think it's Jake Paul. Where if he can get a good hit on him, you'll still lose, but then still be a winner. Mm-hmm. Because think about it. Like, everyone knows Mayweather. They say he runs like you can't hit him. That's, the, that's why he's good. That's why he still has his brain and shit, and he's been through 50 fights and never lost. Because he'd be, bop, bop, bop. be out here. <laughs> Now, if homie can get a lick off, that'd be a good way to sell this fight. A certain amount of licks, maybe? I think just one. You I think, think I think one? if May, think, he, think about it, Mayweather is it should be the best yeah, ever. He is, he is like the best defensive fighter I've ever seen. Ever, right? I've ever seen, yeah. So I was to, like, to sell this fight, he should come out and say, that would be cool. "Homie won't even touch me that one cool. time." That would be cool. And he shouldn't because you're a skilled fighter, and then dude's been boxing for a couple times. Like it, actually, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "What?" The so fuck? I think that'd be kind of dope, man. I like, um, it. I like it. So what, what do you think about this whole like the exhibit fights with the Tyson and Roy? It's like picking up yeah, a little steam. Yeah, I've been getting back into boxing too. I've been watching a lot of getting back into like my documentaries and shit on it, and just kind of getting into it. So no, I like it. It's pretty cool. I mean, I like the quarantine shit. It's kind of giving us different things to perspectives. Yeah, things to be excited about and shit. And yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, if you ain't pivoting, like what, what you, you doing? Like on this year, it's like man, you had ample time. You do. You still do. You do. It's like if you ain't get figured something done, out, get those plans done. And it's like, man, and I know a lot of people, and I know you and me, since the beginning, we've been talking about this. Since the beginning of it, we've been, okay, this is time. You got to figure something out, da 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 And some people are just sitting there thinking, like, man, it's all fucked up. It, You know, the whole year, I can't wait for it to go back. It's like, man, this was your time to make a level up. Yeah. This was the level up. Mm Mm-hmm. 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 Your level up. Your specific. Right. It should be a level up for everybody. I have a feeling, what do you think, when when shit does... When vaccines, and we'll talk about that next. When everything gets back to where everyone feels comfortable being outside, getting all that kind of stuff, do you think it'd be like the Roaring Twenties again? I was thinking something like that. Yeah, I, I think it's like going to be good. I, I have a feeling like it's going to be yeah, major hope so. upgrade. I, hope, I think it's going to. I hope. I hope it'll be prosperous. I think it should be cool. Especially, I mean, after the Great Depression was the Roaring Twenties, right? Yeah. And this is the next but biggest one since Great Depression. So, huh? <laughs> after that was the Great Depression. So. I thought the Great Depression was the early 20s. Uh-uh, 30s. Really? Let's look it up real quick. I thought it was... The, that's why the they called it the Roaring 20s, because it roaring came 20s after. Was successful... No, 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 no. Oh. When was the Great Depression? I, I thought it was 1919. From August 1929 to March 1933. During the 30s, you Yeah. Remember? So it was dope. So why was that? It was dope before the... De- <laughs> so why was <laughs> it the Roaring just- 20s? I guess it was a lot of spending that wasn't really there type of shit. A lot of what? During that time, it was just like a lot of growth as far as entertainment and spending, but I don't think the money was in it really. And stocks just kind of got caught up, I think, during the 30s. You're like the 90s? Kind of, probably like that. Because everyone says the 90s was cold, right? Do they? Financially? I don't know about just like in general, like motherfuckers love the 90s. It was like the golden era of a lot of shit. I think culturally, but I think 90s Maybe culturally. Was fucked up. <laughs> Why, yeah, maybe like late nineties, early two thousands when the tech shit came. Yeah, I can maybe see that's that when shit so. popped off. Yeah, but as far as culturally, everyone says like ninety. I feel like nineties, yeah, nineties nostalgic, sports, super, super nostalgic. Yeah, culturally. Now, are we just saying that because it was that for for us? I think that it's the flavor of the month right now. I think that you have the generation who are coming into the uh, the adults who are making shit and kind of you know having a lot of platforms. They're coming into the age where the nineties babies type of shit. Or when 90s was when they were kids. So it's kind of coming into that age where you're seeing a lot of those platforms being appreciated. Yeah, so I that, think it's just the time for 90s right now. You always have those swing backs. Always get those swing backs. It, yeah. it, it, it's really funny it's like that those there's... kids grow up and then they relive those 90s, their, their childhoods, and they 
kind of develop it and mix it with their adulthood. It's kind of like bringing your childhood out. It's just bringing you out into adulthood. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that. Think about this. There's 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 kids right now that can, that are able that very able bodies that weren't alive in 2000. That's crazy. Super able body, like kids with kids. Guys. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> kids, the kids. Think that, that's crazy right there. You can have a kid and not have been born in 2000. It don't seem that long ago. I know, I know, I know. That's Asian for you, man. Holy That's fuck, Asian, man. Asian. Like they, man. If this shit don't go fast, I don't know what goes fast, man. Holy. Yeah. Even this, even the pandemic went kind of fast. Yeah, it's what, eight months or so? Shit, yeah, March, March 14th? March 14th. Some 15, shit like 13, that. Yeah, like that. that. I remember that week like know. it was yesterday. <laughs> but like, holy shit, how fast is this shit going? Wow, man. And it, and it just gets faster. Yeah. December. It's already the middle of December. It's damn near... Shit, next year, goddammit. Remember, remember Tiger King? Yeah, remember that I whole do thing? remember that shit. I was so mad about that. He was like, bro, you got to watch it. You're going to like it. I'm like, I can't go, bro. Did you, so you, did you never watch it? No. Oh, yeah, that shit no, was good. It was good. There was a scene. I got to talk about this one scene. Shout out to Nate Robinson, by the way. Uh, Yeah, shout out to Nate Robinson for putting us back 400 years. <laughs> Getting your ass fooled by thank, white thank homie. You. White homie beat your ass. Thank you for that. Let's start over, y'all. <laughs> yeah. So he, uh, no. So there was this scene. So you know it was, it was a zoo. Uh-huh. It, or it was like the zoo where this dude was going around um, and he owned it. And one of the motherfucking dudes or one of the, the girls that worked there got her arm bit off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She's <laughs> fucked up. So it was like, and she still works there too, which is crazy. So she got her arm bit off. And then, and then, so people were like waiting in the lobby to get in. So the dude comes, the Tiger King comes out there and goes, "All right, you guys, um, we're gonna have to put a postpone on this. Somebody got their arm bit off by a tiger." <laughs> <laughs> and all the people were looking around like, <laughs> <laughs> "Then they showed a clip of him later going, oh, I'm never gonna financially.' So he goes, "I'm never gonna come back from this." <laughs> like, oh shit! Oh, man. You got you gotta check it out, man. I'm t- I know, like, whenever you got some bullshit time leisure. I don't have leisure time for that shit. <laughs> Why are you so against it? I, what I, I'm it's pop culture. About my time, bro. What, so what do you do for leisure? I develop myself. Oh, me too. But like, so I when's the last watch, time you watched something that was not developing yourself? I try to watch stuff with sustenance, bro. And with whatever what? that is, whether it's comedy or something, I, it's like the way I look at shit, I, that's just something, not something that I'm going to I mean, as far as comedy, it was definitely funny as hell. I know, but that's just not my type of comedy. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's definitely. perfectly fine. You like, like stand up? No, I mean, I love stand-up. Right, Actually, that's yeah. one of my favorite types. But it's not just that. That's just not going to do it for me, though. That's so, like, you wouldn't watch something like um, American Horror Story? Uh, I don't actually don't know much about American Horror Story. So or know. just, like, any of those, like, a, like would, you watch a, would you watch a sitcom? Yeah. Okay, so I you like sitcoms. that kind of comedy. Do you watch... Uh, I know I you like watch documentaries. I'm a, actually, comedy is my favorite genre. So you like shit that's funny, just yeah. not that kind of funny. That's just not going to do it for me. That's just <laughs> I, 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 I'm telling you, there's, a, there's at least... But you know what? It was more of a documentary is what it was. The fact that it was real life is crazy. This, these are real people. Right. Which it was such a shit show. Like this shit was a shit show. Did you ever see... Uh, you might like this, but it's not like... It's a, it's a documentary. Don't Fuck With Cats. I feel like I started to watch this, but no. Well, if you started, there's probably a reason why you did. So don't you probably shouldn't watch this. I want to watch it now because <laughs> <laughs> the first couple episodes is fucked up. They fuck with cats. It's literally called "Don't Fuck with Cats." But they fuck with cats. The first they fuck couple with cats. <laughs> yeah, they fuck with cats. Real <laughs> vicious. <laughs> it's really fuck kittens too, which is even more fucked up. Ah, it's funny. Yeah, God. these fucking kittens, man. God yeah. damn. Did you hear um, Tom Cruise snapped off? So what happened with Mr. Cruise? So I guess. I didn't hear and I, this, so this is what happened from what I've gathered, and I very, very vaguely listened to it. He, he, there was an audio of him snapping on like the crew, like okay. snapping, snapping on the Tom Cruise. On the Tom Cruise was <laughs> Tom Cruise snapping on the Tom Cruise, and uh, and he was going in, like I mean, going in, like if it, if ten was vicious, he was like a thirteen, you know. And uh, what he was saying was kind of right. He was like. You motherfuckers are on this, you know, motherfuckers, I guess people got COVID and everything. You come in here, do the right thing. Y'all know the protocols. Too many people are, we got too many people connected to this. People aren't eating. So he, I think he had a good point of why he was snapping. What is your thought of yelling if you're in like a position of power like that? 
yelling if you're in a position of power like that. Like if somebody well, fucks up. I mean, you have to understand that as a person in a position of power, power is a very unique thing. You have to understand that not everybody in your crew is going to uh, understand the way you're speaking the same way. So I feel like you as a person in power need to understand that more so than anybody. So just because you are yelling, you feel like that's just how I am. As a person in power, your role is different. So you have to kind of know your crowd. So it, even though maybe it, had, it was recorded, is what you're saying? Yeah, I can't tell if it was like low-key recorded or right. he didn't give a fuck. Right. Dude. So I don't know his crew and if that's just how they roll. Because, you know, crews could be tight-knit and shit. You never know how crews roll. They could be the crew that curse each other out and they hug each other later. You never know. But um, it just depends on what, what, what they roll with and shit. What's good for them, shit? Yeah, personally. What's up? Unacceptable. Okay. Because personally... Like, don't talk to me crazy. And here's the reason why. Because I don't talk to you crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, a, I'm a firm believer in the golden rule. You treat people how you want to be treated. Right. Now, you can come at me with some seriousness. Like, Chris, man, we need to talk. You out here, you wilding. Like, this is just a warning. I get that. Especially if I'm fucking up. I definitely get you coming at me on some stern shit. But you cussing me out. This out of respect, because I I don't I don't cuss like right like what are you doing? And see, I don't I, I'm also not un, I don't know exactly what he said at all either, so I don't know the context. He was, was like, saying, so. "You fucking you're fucking fired. If you don't if you fuck up, people are like he was going well, yeah, ham. I didn't know, I didn't know like, that. He, <laughs> if he was a, if ten was vicious, he was a thirteen. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah. fucking going ape shit. Yeah, like don't talk to me that way, because at that point, yeah, I mean, fuck yeah. this job personally. And I would never, I just know I would never do no one like that. And and definitely even, and then talking to somebody's like, like a manager, it's one, like if you're like in my my old job, man, the owner would be snapping at everybody, but it, and even the other managers and shit in front of everybody. Why should I respect your management if you don't even, you know what I'm saying? Right. I, I just feel like you can get, you can still let it be known that you're serious. You can just start. You gotta go like the yelling part. I don't. I don't understand that. That's what I mean. Power is this. It's this fine thing where you can't. You have to understand that everybody's looking at it. So, like you just said, if a GM is coming in yelling at the managers, what the fuck are the employees gonna see? You like, yeah. Why about? should I respect that? Why motherfucker? should I respect that? Right. So you have to understand that people are watching. You have to lead a certain way. You can't just lead all willy nilly. Yeah, I feel like people who 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 just be snapping and yelling and cussing and shit like that, like. Listen, you might have the fear. You might have struck fear in motherfuckers, but you, motherfuckers ain't got your back, though. Right. Like, if shit hits the fan. Right. That's a different way of using your power. Right. It's through fear. It's through, or it's through, a, and, through and it, and it, 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 it it's works a, for some shit. Things work, and it, that doesn't mean that it's right or wrong. It just works for different people, and it just depends on if they're cool with that or not. You know, because being stern or cursing motherfuckers out as, as far as what he did, it's gonna work for a lot. Of, it worked for a lot of motherfuckers in Hollywood. Actually, there's a lot of dead people in Hollywood who that worked perfectly for, and who are legends, who ain't shit said about. You know what I mean? So that shit does get stuff done, but that 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 doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's gonna tolerate that shit, and we just gonna go boom by. No, my point is, even if you getting cussed out, and again, you're right. There's obviously <clears throat> people who have been cussed out and still respected the motherfucker cussed them out. I get that. But if you talk to me crazy, disrespectfully. Mm -hmm. You might strike some fear in me. I might lose my job and all that kind of shit. But if shit hits the fan, I do not have your back. Absolutely not. And I just don't understand personally. And I, you can lead as the devil or leave as a god. I get that. You ain't getting the ultimate respect from me cussing, cussing right. at me, Absolutely. vicious. And I, I'm glad you said that. So to bring that back to Tom Cruise, um, let's say another celebrity who just a random celebrity who is dead. A lot of times, people within their crews don't fuck with them. Right, because the if you look at the trials and tribulations and shit that like James Brown's crew, you you talk to some people in James Brown's crews or Boosie Collins' crew or not Boosie Collins, but you know this certain crews back in the day and shit, motherfuckers was hated, <laughs> you know. So so a lot of times that shit was pushed, but it wasn't necessarily meaning that like we from outside perspective see them as oh man they did these great things, but people who know them and had to go through it with them, they weren't gonna respect them like that. So right, to right. bring it back to like a Tom Cruise situation, his crew his crew probably wouldn't respect the shit out of him at all. Although he's going to remember, be remembered a certain way regardless. Right. Yeah, I, I feel what like I want to be, I, I, I don't know. I just don't that's desire how, that's to. That's how I know. Work, though. That's so how the shit works. Up. We like glorify that shit, but push the other shit to the side. Like you're a shitty person. I don't give a fuck about that. What did you do? You did movies. You did this and this and this. Fuck that. That's cool. Yeah, that's you know what? I, I, I know personally, I need, and if I do do that, I want to get away from that. Because I've heard, yeah. who was that? I heard that, uh, who was it? The uh, comedy, uh, 
Will, not Will Smith, Martin Lawrence. Maybe it was Martin Lawrence. No, Chris Tucker. One of them fools was hard to work with. We all know from what they did, but the, everyone says they were really super hard to work with because they was out here wild. And oh, how about this? Pivot. How do you feel about divas? Divas. Like the James Harden situation. You got it. Was, was, was James? Put me on so hand. James. So James Harden is uh, don't want to be in Houston no more. Okay. Requested a trade. Okay. And he and then I guess that to get him there, they gave him the world. Right. He could do whatever mm-hmm. the fuck he want. And he just he's starting to wild out now. Like you know, he can't. He he like don't give a fuck. He didn't go to training yeah, camp. He he's out here with he baby. baby he, you know what I'm saying? And then the out here guns. flunt, flunt, flaunting it out here. Is he playing in the pregames? Yeah, he played the other night. Okay. But he also gained like 15, 20 pounds, yeah, and you can kind of see it. And like I said, he still was hooping. So don't yeah. get me wrong. So he's he's and he probably gonna lose that weight quick. But it's like, I don't I don't like that shit either. Coming here being a diva is like nigga. Cause now you think that you're like you're better. Like when you come, like oh, I'll be there when I get there, kind of thing. Like mm-hmm. that ain't cool, man. Respect people's time. Right. I don't like when people try to big time motherfuckers. Like don't big time me, man. I think it's an interesting time in the league though, because players are now getting a chance to kind of flex themselves a little bit, and this is the first time they've ever really been able to do that to this extent. Um. Well, people have been trying to do it a little bit, but this is kind of like one of the... And now it's opening. It's opening more, and James Harden just so happens to be in a situation where it's like the floodgates are opening. As far as like what players... Because players have held out in different ways before. This is just one of the first ways where it's been this publicized and big, big and shit. Um, but I'm, wait, wait, hold on. I'm talking about like the wilding out and you motherfuckers need me that like that whole vibe, that diva yeah, shit. Like, yeah. you know, if, if y'all wouldn't be shit if it wasn't for me, I like mean, that whole Butler energy. did the same exact thing. He just went to practice and did it. But at least in that situation, it's it's hard to go against the fact that this whole thing was work ethic, and he wanted everyone to work. Mm-hmm. Whereas you like like when I don't think it's about, but I think everybody else wants it to be about work ethic. Who said James Harden wanted it to be about work ethic? Oh, unless no, I'm reading this wrong. No, yeah, James Harden is out here like I don't want to be here. So or more so like I'll get to the plane when I get there. Like the plane well, taking off in ten for, minutes. He's doing this for a reason, though. No, well, no, I'm talking about he's since he's been in Houston. Like, yeah, like the plane goes when he says it goes, and uh, they be like, get here at seven, and he be like, I'll be there. And oh, then, okay, the, okay, like, the plane will mean, wait for him, like diva, yeah, you know. Yeah, 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 so it's yeah, like yeah, you yeah. out here, like you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. on he's that really, Antonio Brown shit. He's really trying to force his his way out. No, 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 no. This is before. Like he's always done things his way or the highway. Like you, you okay. gonna you gonna y'all gonna follow me, and what the fuck you gonna do about it? And and then there's like there's like a lack of professionalism to me. It's like you gonna do shit on my time. It's like, bro, you got a whole plane of motherfuckers here. You got the coaching staff. Niggas is ready at seven, and you get there at eight because I'm James Harden. I can do what the fuck I want. Mm-hmm. That ain't cool to me. I, I'm, I'm not cool with that. Mm-hmm. Now if there's a reason or whatever that's different. But like you're like, no, okay, no, I don't feel like I'm not practicing today because I don't want right. to. Right. I don't want to. What the fuck you gonna do about it? Like, this is a bad look, especially from your teammates. Cause now your teammates yeah. don't fuck with you. Right. Maybe on the court. He really wants some out of Houston type shit right now. But I think that it's just coming now. But the point is, he's been this way. So the the story's coming out that it's been this way the whole time. Mm-hmm. But because he's putting up 50 points a game, he was killing it. You know, he's always in the envy. So he's cold as fuck, right? Mm-hmm. And then and they let him get away with it. So, right, the story's coming out from, like, front office or something? That's stuff We're not that from the front there. office, but then he's, it's always been James Harden's show. It's his way or the highway. And now that he wants out, all the shit's leaking that he's kind of a bad influence. Mm. You see what I'm saying? So my, my, the point is, is when you think your time is more important, I don't give a fuck how big of a star you are. When, if your time is more important than the next person, that's fucked up. Mm-hmm. I don't think my personal belief is you shouldn't treat people that way. Right. Even if you are the shit, then you handle your shit with the team. You you handle. But now when you holding up everyone else's shit, right? Because I'm gonna get there when I get there. Like, come on, Dad, that's what you want. <laughs> And he, he, he come out like, yeah, what the fuck you going to do about it? And it's like, wow, well, I don't know. Kind of like my old boss, that's what he was, man. If you, Wow. He goes, I could talk to you any way I want to. He'd be like, if you don't like it, you can leave. Good point, right? That's a great point. But I just feel like that's such a shitty way to lead. You yeah. know, because James Harden is a le- he's supposed to be the leader, you right. know? That's such a I shit. I don't think he respects the leadership there, though. That's it's a it's a it's an wait from the jump though from day one since he signed it was his way or the highway since the day he signed. The they, day he signed according them. to the narrative. So I, yeah, I got to get more into it because I, I I don't know. I got to see the narrative actually. I got to see the narrative because a lot of times people if I got if if I'm just hearing I got to hear the perspective. 
that's that's what I should say. Yeah, especially from James Harden. Yeah, because a lot of times people just flood these players, and it's like the media versus one player, and I have no idea what actually is going on with their side. It's just easy. So how do you feel it's, about it's, the it's media? It's historically been been easier for the media to create the narrative versus the player create the narrative. So have you heard the thing about Kyrie Irving? What about him? He uh, Kyrie Irving. He stopped talking to the media. I know. Right, he and he called the media pawns. Uh huh. And because he made a comment about uh, LeBron or not. No, he made a comment about KD and it was, did you hear what he said? Yeah. Yeah. So motherfuckers asking about it. And then Kyrie Irving and I, I I kind of agree with this. Like, no, y'all be flipping shit around. So I'm not talking to y'all no more. I get that. But then I heard, I heard a different side of the argument. I was like, so like, I know we all kind of think the media will be on bullshit, especially when it comes to sports media, Mm -hmm. but without the sports media, like we're, they're like the closest. And maybe it's getting different now because it's, podcast and you know you get a little bit more to ask so maybe right, the media right. need less say, it's, it's a, it's a challenge so, so maybe it's on. some yeah maybe it's a challenge but before this time and before like that was our way to talk to right. you didn't hear jordan talk unless you talked to the media but you also didn't hear you also heard the the person who created the narratives was the person who created the media it was maybe it had been let's say back in the day when newspaper was the only type of media when let's say uh fucking I don't know, uh, Will Chamberlain or some shit. It's probably his words, but the narrative is still the person who created the media. Right, that's a good point. You know what I mean? So this is like the first time in history now with podcasts and other things like that where we're trying to create our own narratives as players. But for the most part, the media has been the driving factor for most players having fucking headaches, especially superstars. Now, could you see... I Okay, and I agree with that 100%. How could you not agree with that? I also heard... But also because of the media is the reason why you're making fucking fifty million dollars because we're the ones that pump your shit out. You are, yeah. We're the ones saying even though we talk, they talk about LeBron James, LeBron James, LeBron James. People get sick of it, but what they're talking about LeBron James is getting paid because of that. Yeah. Now That's you can say too. it's definitely, true too. and not everyone, you, not everyone's watching every game every day, so you only see the main games and then what the media talks about them. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's kind of like a. It's like a necessary evil almost. But I think it's changing because of podcasts and shit. Yeah, definitely. I think people just want their own voice, and that's what Kyrie is going through because he knows what the media They're historically flip it, the twist media it. Has historically yeah. done is Kyrie isn't saying anything crazy that we all don't know. We know that media flip shit. Right. We know this historically. It's very shock value driven. In the, in the way he that's... said it, though, is like, and I get it. He's frustrated. He's going to say what he wants, and I like that about him. He, he He's like, I don't talk to peons. It's rough, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to them, the niggas who – who going to, like, they could actually really destroy your shit now. Right. So one is like to call, and I think he backtracked it's it a little interesting. bit. interesting. It's interesting. You came out and said, you guys are yeah. peons. I don't talk to peons. I'm like, wow. To be an entertainer in this day and age, you're, it's like kind of like your nemesis is like the media. Or your nemesis is like a friend. It's like a person, it's like a source that you need because you need to reach people. So you need the media in order to reach people and do all this stuff. You need that platform, but you also kind of need a good relationship with them. Well, see, now let me ask you this. How come some athletes crush it with the media? I mean, they personally Like they don't really – it's like I I they don't give you a reason. For the media, though. He doesn't – he doesn't – That's what I'm thinking. So, like, sometimes you put your foot in your own – like, so obviously they ask you questions. And I get it. You're emotional. You just had a game. You just lost. You just missed a shot. Something just happened. You're pissed off. You're a human fucking being. I get that. 100%. And then they be asking these dumbass questions <laughs> almost to see if you fuck up, right? As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think they take courses and shit on how to deal with the media and the questions, right? Yeah. I hope um, so, shit. But, like, nigga, they, they say KD's soft and sensitive and shit like that. It's like, well, according to, like, somebody else who who asked those same questions, they didn't they didn't answer it the way you did. You, you answered it with the soft and sensitive type response. Right. So that's why that narrative was written about you because you are the one who's tripping. Whereas LeBron James is pretty fucking, pretty fucking. Yeah, pretty solid. You know what I'm saying about how he answers his questions or go solid. back Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Even when they're upset, they still know how to keep it professional as right, fuck. Right, right, right. And then on his podcast, he'd get off a little cool. bit. It's such a skill. Right, so then niggas like Kyrie, who s- speaks off the cuff, mm-hmm. which I like, because then you get to hear the real him. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, well, nigga, damn, you you falling for the bait, so we gonna get yeah, your yeah, ass. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you have to. I think I heard uh, Raja Bell has a podcast, which is. Oh yeah, decent. is it good? Yeah, it's pretty decent. It's pretty nice and quick. He used to have a stroke ball, boy. Yeah, yeah, he, had, he, I like he had a hard ass head. I feel like he hit the floor. <laughs> it just didn't. It just broke the floor. But anyway, he was saying that uh, Kyrie just you need to realize the position you're in. You yes you. 
dude, you are an NBA player. You're an entertainer. And th- your job is to have a relationship with the media somehow. So whatever you do say, though you are a person that has those opinions, you don't have to feed them every single opinion that you have. Yeah, every time? Because if unless you want the smoke. If you don't want the smoke, then don't feed them everything. Give them mm. the polished version. Talk to LeBron while you're talking about him shit. Right, right. You know what I mean? Or go on your podcast. But even now, even if, so like Kyrie Irving, what, what I heard it is. It was on the podcast with KD, I believe. Yeah, and then people were asking questions about what he said on the podcast. Yeah. So it's like, well, just like us, when, you, when you're when on a podcast yeah. and you, live, you put your shit out there. That's they, why it's an interesting time with media and sports and stuff like that. Because now players are finally getting their own version of the story. Right, so, so now you can a, get two a, sides, which which is so dope, it's though. Interesting. It's an interesting time, the twenty twenty. Just remember, like the podcast. But I know you're gonna probably trust the person's narrative versus what another motherfucker says about. Finally, them. we can hear it for the first time, really, like right. genuinely. You couldn't hear, it, especially genuinely. long form talk. And we're here for it. It's almost like a. It's like the first could, time people can actually do it, like, hear it, you know. And you could bullshit, a fucking little interview for five minutes. Ain't it's hard to bullshit a podcast. Yeah. Cause niggas can see that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? It's yeah. really it's really hard to bullshit an hour and a half multiple times. Right. Cause yeah. niggas gonna know that's this is who they this is who they are, you know? Yeah. Um And it's you you. That's what I'm saying. And and I, I fucking love to me it's therapy. Yeah, I feel that too. Right? It's like a therapy. I love fucking I love podcasts. It, love Let's talk about your merchandise, man. I see you trying to pop off here. Yeah, talk man, about I'm it. Trying. It's like our little advertisement uh, I know, section. Right, right, right. right. So I just got the First shirt popping right now. Um, advertise. Oh, excuse me, advertisement. The the apparel is gonna be coming soon. I'm still in the works with it, but I'm gonna start off with my mask first. So I'm gonna have some pretty cool masks that I'm gonna go with. Actually, if you can look at the shirt, bam, it's gonna be my pretty cool Apes Productions. It's gonna be the middle ape here with the mask. He's rocking it, representing yeah, to that. the times. You know that. what I'm saying? 2020 that. represent. Uh, but he's gonna be faced with the mask right here. So I'm gonna have those available for on the website. Um, soon. Check that out, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. See you over there working, nigga. Yeah, yeah. I've just got the printing press, so I'm pressing it myself, man. Just Doing investing all the work. in different things. Whatever I try to have my money, I try to invest it smartly. So, Flip yeah, it and reverse it. Goddamn it. Yeah, my. Uh my merchandise is doing very well. I see you, boy. Shout out to that Barney looking good. Yeah, that's my that's the that's the favorite one. I call this the uh this is the face this is the the face of the brand hoodie. Yes, I like it. Cuz the purple's like the whole yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's the face. Uh I got some really big dreams with this shit now, you know? I uh I I you know you have a you ever heard of a vision board? Mhm. So I wrote a vision board and it, I put a collaboration with Supreme 2024. And that's like, and I and I actually I can feel I can feel something. Yeah, I can feel you that. You got a good bubbling buzz going right now with it too, and it feel I know it feels amazing. Um, it it, it it's uh it feels really good, man. That people like support it, you know. Mm-hmm. People supporting the brand, and 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 shout out to the people who I feel I don't want to say I feel bad because I had to start somewhere, but when people bought the merchandise earlier, I was like just trying to get it out, but now right. I have flipped it to like I want it to be nicer. And longer lasting, right? It's like I I want cares none brand to be synonymous with quality. Nice. And like it's like for real, you know. Just like my attitude, if you're gonna do something, do it right. Right. So nothing's coming out of my name cheap any ever again. Like mm-hmm. it's gonna be, it's either gonna be. And listen, these hoodies ain't cheap. You know what I'm saying? This motherfucker is seventy dollars. It is not cheap. Oh yeah, that's good quality. But it's going like this motherfucker gonna last. You know what I'm saying? And it's warm as shit. You know what I'm saying? Whereas the first ones. We're a little cheaper, and they won't last as long, and you can kind of tell they don't. You know, not as heavy. Um, but just going forward, I my brand will be synonymous with with quality, even with the content, with the podcast, with the camera, with my mind. I just if my if if Karis Nunn's attached to it, he's probably putting his all into it, mm-hmm. and I just want, I want to keep that shit going. So shout out to everyone who's got it. That's wonderful. That's super dope because I've. Bro, I'm almost at 300 items sold in two months. My boy. Isn't that nuts? <laughs> that shit's crazy. And and the site's coming out. I got their website. Cares Nun- yeah, y'all hear that? What you say? K- Caresnone.com's coming out soon. Nice, uh, nice, I'm, nice. I'm nice. working on it as we speak. Good. Um, so that'd be a lot easier because right now I'm kind of taking all the orders by hand. Right. And then you'll set up the, the payment system. All that shit through. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I'm working on right now. That's my next, not my next uh, order of business, kind of fleshing out that part of the website. And it's not that it's not that I'm just using a Shopify, man. Yeah, that's for I mean. me personally. Um, I'm, I'm, I probably do something like that as well. I think I have Shopify now. Matter of fact, I'm gonna take a look. 
super, super, super legit. Uh, cause right now I'm doing everything by, and like, I'm okay with it. You know, I'm not scared of no work, but it is a thing. Like if somebody's like, Hey, I'm, I'm interested. And because I'm, you know, and the good thing about selling merchandise for us specifically or anybody else is we've been in the customer service game. Yeah. So we just know how to deal with that. Yeah, and like be efficient about stuff. Yeah, be efficient. Do right, you know, mm-hmm. be attentive. Mm-hmm. To, to know how to speak. Mm-hmm. To say the thank yous, exactly you know, be, and is. being appreciative. Because at the end of the day, they don't have to buy shit for me. Exactly. They're choosing to, especially during the fucking pandemic when niggas is broke. I'm telling you. You know, and they're, and they're not buying cheap shit from me. So I'm it's like, 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 like for real, for real, shout out. To all these people that are coming through, and I got more coming through. They're coming now, literally selling about fifteen a week minimum. Nice. It's crazy. Oh man, that's wonderful. That's it's crazy, wonderful. and I don't even have. And, and I'm about to start doing this shit myself as well. Um, shout out to everybody. So thank you, man, yeah. very much. We're actually going to sh- shut this one down because yes, we're about to do an album release party for Josh Smith. Woo! Let's go, my boy Illa. He'll be in a little bit. Um, he's his album release party. Mm-hmm. We got a couple couple people coming over here, and that should be dope. That's he wanted me dope. wanted me to host it. I really don't know what to expect, but fuck it, cares not, right? We are gonna I figure know, the right? fuck out. You're gonna be hosting it, and yours truly will be uh, the music selection for the night, hosting the party. So yeah, we'll be in here beats. turning up. And like I said, it's a party via Zoom, so it's not like a party party. It's but. a party. It's a party. It's a party. <laughs> um, I, if I knew the link, I would tell these people. But it won't even be mad. This won't even be out. Yeah, that's by, true. by the time yeah, this true. comes out, it won't even be out. But we're uh, about to go do that though. And as always. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Care's done. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs>